Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel and Bella Crafts. Rachel here. I hope you're all well. Uh, thanks for joining me for today's video. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make some fabric pockets from book pages. Um, but before I do that, I just want to share with you the project that I'm currently working on. Um, so I think I mentioned in my last video about my next design team project. Um, and I'm just going to give you a quick flip through this morning of the beautiful kits I'm working with. So the kit has come from um, Brigida. She is in our uh, junk journaling group. Um, I've done a design team project for her in the past and her Etsy shop is called Cloverleaf Creations. Um, her kit, this one here, is called Blossom Song. Um, there are two kits on her Etsy shop. There is one that is full of pages and there are lots of pages. And then there's one that has got all of the um, ephemera with it. Uh, and that's huge as well. And then the other kit of hers that I'm working with is the Vintage Birds Sticker Embellishments. And these are um, tiny little, well, I say tiny, actually, they're really good size. Um, they're like Polaroid photographs and um, they've got all these lovely, lovely images on them of these beautiful birds. So if I just quickly show you these a second. Um, and they're great because there's so many different things that you can do with them which I will show you, possibly not in this video, but maybe in the next. Um, but they're really lovely and they're really classic um, images that she's used on these of the birds. They're not, you know, because sometimes we can tend to see, um, you know, it, the usual type, or rather, you know, household type birds. But these are, are quite unusual. And there's some really, really lovely examples of um, different birds on this. So we'll be incorporating those into the journal. Um, but I just wanted to show you some of these beautiful pages because it really is a gorgeous kit and um, as the name suggests a lot of the pages are um, decorated with the images of the blossom and then you've got you know some of the music paper there's dragonflies in there as well and she's also got some really lovely lace patterns in there so um, lots of different um, ideas sprang to mind when I first saw it um, I knew it was going to require um, lace because obviously it's been incorporated here um, but it's been a real uh, inspiration to work with to the point where I have actually been up rather late over the last two nights um, making the journal I was going to initially just do my cover and then um, do the rest of the bits with you guys and then I do apologize I just got so excited I just tanked on so ha is it took quarter past five this morning um, putting my signatures and everything in but I mean, these pages are just stunning. It's it's really, um, oh, I, I got that upside down, sorry. Um, it's really just, you know, inspires you to just want to get on with it and, and put it in and make a lovely journal out of it. Um, aside from these pages that I'm showing you here, there are also three pages with um, uh, lines of writing on. Um, I'll show you those in the journal in a second. Um, but I just wanted you to be able to see that these beautiful, I mean, this is so clear, it's, it's lovely. It literally jumps off the page at you. And these gorgeous dragonflies. So there we go. So that's the kit, just so that you can see what it is that I'm working with. And um, if you want to go and um, purchase Brigitte's kit, um, I will put the link down below. Um, this is the journal that I'm working on. So something a little bit different for me. I, I didn't want to um, do something. I didn't want to do another just a fabric cover. I was going to. I know I told you all I was going to do. Um, the quilted journal covers, and I was going to do a mass meeting, do three of them and one thing another. But um, well, my brain just went in a different direction and it was like, ah, no, I want to do this instead. So I had a um, just a, a, a brown envelope, similar to kind of like the A5 Amazon ones that you get, you know, when you've got something, say like a phone cover or something, they're quite, you know, narrow. Um, it was a similar kind of packaging to that. I literally have just undone the whole thing. Um, and then it opened up into this lovely shape with this really interesting, you can see that there, this like divot in the top, which I wanted to leave in because I've got, plans for that afterwards um, and I covered it in this really lovely uh, wallpaper and um, I don't know if you can see that it's a bit shiny and sparkly but that's blue um, and then I've attached I've used another one of my charity shop scarves to make a uh, closure and I've literally just put a um, eyelet in and run that through there so I mean I'm sure I'll do that a bit tidy when I put it on. And on the front, the front's not finished just yet, but I've started with um, a book page on sewn onto um, a piece of uh, a vintage quilt. And I've put a, 
a piece of the kit ephemera behind it and then I've used one of these lovely um, bird uh, embellishments and I've also stitched that onto um, a piece of quilt and then I've just gone around it then with um, the gold edging and the same here. Um, and then as a closure, I've been inspired by Bella's last journal, so I wanted to try using the elastics. So um, this is the first time for me using these. So I've remembered this time, I was, even though I was doing it like in the middle of the night because I couldn't sleep, I was trying to be a bit more methodical. There's nothing worse than putting your lace on the end and then thinking, oh, I should have bound the journal first. Or So that's the nice thing about this because I was able to put the binding in, then add the lace over the top because obviously um, Bella gave me some blue uh, elastic yesterday, which I've popped under there, but it, the lace then has muted it down a bit. So, um, and then I finished it then with this nice blue cornflower colored stitching around the outside. So that's the cover. Okay, so this is the inside so far. So what I've done here is I've added, um, we had a bit of fun yesterday, I don't know if any of you saw my photo on Instagram, but we decided to have a go at uh, Barbara from Fortune and Dragonflies has been doing um, some paints splashing and um, jazzing up her uh, her coffee dyed paper. So mum and I had a go yesterday in her dining room, not my dining room, thankfully. <laughs> there was lots of paper everywhere <laughs> and plastic sheets, but actually we didn't make much mess. I think it's the spray of the coffee dye is the worst. But um, so, yeah, we did the... Um, the, we did some envelopes and there are also some pages which I'll show you in a second. So I've added this bit of lace here just to give it the front a bit of detail there then when you open it up. And then um, this then flips out and then in here then you'll have a tuck spot and then, can you see that size? I think, yeah, there we go. In there's a tuck spot and then in there is a pocket where I plan to put um, a large tag. Um, and then I've just collaged the inside of the um, packaging um, and I've used some of the pages from the kits which are underneath here, some music paper because obviously it's Blossom Song and then I found some images of Blossom then uh, in some of my books that I've got and oh, there's another one there then at the back, that's an actual, I think that's out of a, um, I'm not sure that came out of a magazine actually but again that's uh, a lovely image there, a photographic image of Blossom and then another piece of the kit here so I just thought it would just you know Made it a bit more interesting and then the kit pages so so far i've done nothing to the pages i've literally just put them together and i've just added lace on all of the um kit pages here's one of the pages that we did yesterday so um i was really pleased how they came out so we did um Oh my goodness, what do we use? We used acrylics actually, because Mum had tried it with watercolours, but it was a bit too muted. So we used acrylics. We watered down some acrylic paints, and Mum had the gold watercolour palette um, paints, and then we coffee sprayed it all first, and then we threw on the salt, which is what's given this lovely um, speckled, deckled uh, kind of effect. But I love them, I think they're fab. So again, like I say, our first attempt, I'm sure we'll. Uh, as we play about with it, you know, it'll, um, it'll be good to try some different things, but I just think they're lovely. And I thought they went really well with um, this kit because, you know, the way that the colors, um, they lighten and they darken throughout the kit. And uh, again, the papers did that. So I put quite a few coffee papers in this journal because I want it to be, um, you know, so that whoever has it, they can write in it or add to it, what have you. So obviously I've got plans of some ephemera to put in, which I'm going to hopefully get some of the, them done with you guys. But um, a lot of it I want to leave. Uh, this is an example now of a writing page, but I really wanted to be able to leave it so that um, somebody can put their own impression on it. I love this page. I think that's just stunning. But um, yeah, so, so I've got a couple of uh, old book pages in here as well that have got this really interesting aging effect to it. Another one of our pages we did there. Another one of the book pages, a writing page, just lovely, isn't that? So I've tried to incorporate my laces with the colours of the kit. Um, there's my elastic there, so obviously that's not in place tight yet because I haven't finished, but at the moment I'm still able to um, take the pages in and out now to um, work on them because I want to stitch some of these as well. So I haven't done any of that yet. I've literally just put the signature together um, and then cut them all into size and then place them all in the journal. So that's another one. That's one of my plain coffee dye papers I did in the garden the other day. And then they 
blue all around the lawn, which is quite funny. <laughs> that I love that page. I, I absolutely love blossom. It's um I love blossom trees. I just love that time of year. And it's so short, isn't it? It's you know it's on the tree but for a minute and then well in Wales anyway, usually we have the the May blossom come out and then we'll have winds and weathers and within a week it's all over the floor. But just for that short period of time you have all that um splash of colour after you know the bleakness of winter that's just stunning that page i love that so plenty of writing space um and then plenty of you know space for creativity this is the other oh no it wasn't from a magazine i do apologize it was from a um like a, a calendar diary book it was that's the bit that i've um they took the other side off and put in the thing um because that's the back of it there so we've got an old welsh hymn book page there with the um the music on the back there i love that one as well with the white there's lots of salt on that one um and there's another one and then we've got another uh vintage book page um and i picked this one because look what it says there can you see that it says miss rachel my name's in the book i thought that was really cool so i thought oh, I'll definitely put that one in and that one's gorgeous as well these would be great in um christmas journals wouldn't they if you wanted to bring like a snowy glacier effect so i think we'll be revisiting those later in the year definitely um and i already know what kit i would like to use with it as well because i didn't get i found this brilliant kit last year but didn't um use it i didn't get it in time and i'd already done my christmas ones then so uh Yes, gosh, we don't want to talk about Christmas. It's, it's June. It is June, isn't it? Yeah, it's still June. I'm never quite sure these days. So there we are. Another one. And these lovely little birds. Look, so you can see now I want to bring in these, um, the other kit that uh, Brigida gave me. Uh, that's the back then of that lovely blossom page. And then another painted page. And another writing page. So there we go. So at the moment, my journal is sitting nice and flat. It probably won't stay like that, but... I love this bit when it's just like everything just fits together so nice, doesn't it? <laughs> and then we're going to spoil it and fill it with loads of stuff. No, I'm only kidding. Right, so that's what I've got in mind. So you can see then what I'm um, aiming for then with the, um, the ephemera that we're looking at. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how I made my fabric book page pocket. And before I start today, I just want to say a huge thank you to Rose who um, bought me a copy this week. And um, we have signed up to the new uh, to the link. It's new to us, sorry. Um, for the website, it's called uh, Buy Me a Coffee. It's something that is set up for um, artists and um, uh, people like ourselves that do um, YouTube uh, channels and tutorials. Um, and it's just a way for uh, supporters to um, support if they want to. You can, um, and it's, it's just literally called Buy Me a Coffee. You just you can go and just make a donation into the channel but it helps us then to um purchase our equipment and our supplies to carry on doing um videos so if you did want to take a look at that the link is in our um description box below the video so thank you ever so much for that rose it was uh, a really lovely surprise to wake up to the other, <laughs> the other morning and um find out that somebody bought me a coffee so thank you so much for that okay I've called it a book page pocket, but I just looked inside to see which book I'd used last night when I did it. Um, and then realised I didn't use a book page last night. I actually used a piece of coffee dye paper. Um, the reason I did that was because it was on my desk and I'd already folded it. And as I folded it, I thought, oh, I know I'm going to put fabric on that. So, <laughs> but I'm going to do it in a moment with a book page. Um, but yeah, just to give you a quick, so I, I haven't stuck this on yet. Um, but basically that's a little cluster that I'm going to use to... Um, decorate the top so I just did a few little bits of slow stitch across the top there and then underneath then um, I've is, this is an old um, tablecloth and I cut, cut it down I like the blue I thought it went well with the different types of blue in the kit and um, I've simply um, stitched it onto the coffee dye paper and then I've added um, this lovely blue lace trim and then I've added some of this um, beaded trim on top of that there but I do intend then to place my little cluster on the top so I think I just finished it off nicely okay so without further ado let's crack on so I've got my book pages here I want to use up some of these um I've got this old cookery book just bumping around and I keep kicking it around the floor and no I'm not kicking it around the floor but I am bumping my toe on it a lot so 
I'm going to try and use some of those book pages and I'm going to use this beautiful, beautiful fabric that my fabulous sister gave to uh, my mum and myself this week. My sister, she's also very clever. She um, she uh, makes, uh, she sews, she uh, makes her own um, haberdashery items in the house. So she's just made, um, well, she's redecorated her, her living room um, and she's done it in this most beautiful teal colour. Actually, not far off. I don't know if you can see my file folder here. Very similar to this colour here. Um, and she's made these beautiful blinds. I think they call Roman blinds, the ones that fold out and down like that. Um, she's made these beautiful blinds and she's given us the leftover fabrics. So this is the fabric that is on the blinds in my sister's living room and they are fabulous. Um, and uh, I did pop down to see her room the other day and it looks really, really nice. So I'm going to use a section of this because I like all the different blues that are in it. and. These elements here that kind of go with the gold bits that I've uh, I want to put into the journal as well so I'm going to just cut a piece of this off so first of all what you need is a book page it doesn't really matter what size but obviously just depending on the size it's going to be dependent then on um, the size of your envelope now this one here that I did last night is quite a large one um, but we could do these at any size at all so I'm going to start with, um, obviously bear in mind, I don't want that image on the inside of my, when I open the flap. So I'm going to leave this bit on show. Um, because there's nothing offensive there. It's a nice thing about working with an old cookery book. It's all just word of food. So providing you're not on a diet like I am, it won't be too distracting. Um, right, okay. So that needs to just be straightened up because I've sliced this end off. So basically we're just going to fold it up like we would. This is a really, really, really easy pocket to make. Oh, envelope to make, sorry. Um, we're just going to fold it up um, just over two thirds and then you're going to bring the flap down. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of a gap there because it just makes it easy when you're trying to get things in and out. So I'm going to square on that side and then I'm just going to square the end of that page off. Now I have got two pages here only because they've already stuck together and I thought it might make it nice and firm but obviously depending on what um, paper you're using um, if it's thick enough you should only need to use one really because the last one I did I've only used one sheet of coffee dye paper and my printing paper I think is only like uh, 80 GSM so it's not um, particularly thick is what I'm saying um, but then obviously if you're going to be putting fabric on it it's going to get quite thick isn't it so that's the shape i'm just going to square that off a second on my paper cutter at your moment okay so that's done oh excuse me squeaky chair that's nice and square now so the next thing i'm going to do i didn't cut off a piece from um, the bundle of fabric beforehand because i didn't want to i don't want to waste any of this lovely fabric so i don't want to unnecessarily cut pieces longer than they need to be if that makes sense so that's why i'm working with this huge lens but obviously we'd normally have um, an off cut piece there so flatten your envelope back out onto the fabric and then um, we're going to glue the paper onto the fabric but not excessively because I am going to be stitching it uh, obviously if you don't have a sewing machine and you just want to do this then you would do it with Fabri-Tac and I would edge then um, make sure you edge all of your fabric um, and just make sure that it's all everything is stuck really well. Um, but if you want to finish it with the sewing machine, as I'm going to, you really just need to um, affix the fabric to the book page so that when you're stitching, it doesn't move around. So I'm just going to simply go into the centre and do that. I don't want to put the glue where my sewing needle is going to be going. Shut that back down a second. Okay. Yes. That food on there looks very yummy. I don't even like olives. I must be hungry. <laughs> I'm not actually. I'm only kidding. No, actually, diet's going really, really well. I um, I managed to lose ten pound for this week, so I was obviously carrying lots of water. But that's all gone now, so feeling a lot better already. Um, I well, I've gone the other way now. I was trying to. I go and make myself remind myself to eat. So, tummy shrunk. Anyway, I'm not looking for food, which is always a good sign, isn't it? And uh, I'm running up and down the stairs again, so that's good. It's good to be able to uh, 
we're moving around to this all these lockdowns we've got a lot to answer for haven't they <laughs> comes our health let me just stick that in place because i want that moving around my machine okay dokey all right now i'm going to um just cut this now across the bottom i don't want to take all of that over to the sewing machine and then the rest i will cut then um afterwards but uh I can't do it on that angle. So bear with me a second. Okay, so I've cut around my fabric now and I've used my um, pink and shears to uh, give that really lovely um, uniform edge all the way around. I'm just going to nip over to the machine now and pop a stitch around it and I'll be back. Okay, so that's that bit done there. Um, now, I did think about this earlier on. Obviously, you can do this in two ways. You can either stitch all the way around the outside as I've done here or you can fold your envelope first and then stitch it closed um, when you're doing your stitching. Um, I've elected not to do that. I've done that previously in the past but this time I just felt that I wanted to have a really fluid um, stitch that ran all the way around and right up into the uh, the top flap so um, but it, 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 you know it, it is no right or wrong way I also do find sometimes as well that perhaps when we stitch things shut they tend to be perhaps very very tight whereas um, you know by gluing this now I'll be able to give myself a little bit of flexibility in the way that I do it so obviously we need to be able to get in and out of our, um, of our envelope don't we so here is what it looks like now on the other side. Let me just try and flatten these creases down a bit in a minute now. Try and get rid of a bit of the bulk. Because obviously I've added this beautiful upholstery. Oh my gosh, isn't that stunning? I knew that was going to look nice. So I've used, um, I've got like a navy thread in my machine at the moment, um, which I really, really like. Um, it's darker than what I've used on the cover of the journal. Um, but I think that's quite effective in there. So yeah, you'll be able to open up that envelope and learn how to make some nice ham and asparagus rolls. Oh, yummy. Okay. So the next thing that you do now is um, you're going to glue this closed. Um, and to do that, I'm simply going to grab it a fabric tack and I'm going to just glue down the sides where the stitching is. Oh, my glue is a bit messy. So there we go. Let's just pop a bit of glue down there. Don't over glue, obviously, because you don't want it all pouring out the outside and you don't want to lose space inside the journal so as I say I'm just going to glue on my stitch line there um here we are let's put the lid back on that and then we will fold it shut so making sure that we're in line at the bottom and then just press on that there and that should do the job so that is now my envelope made. <sighs> I don't know if I made that look as easy as it was, but that was really easy, really, really easy. You could do that quite simply in, you know, five minutes flat. These are not difficult, but my goodness, that is so effective, I think, when you add that then into a journal. That's going to look really bright and vibrant and it allows you then to bring in lots of different colours and patterns. So if you weren't using a digi kit, for instance, and you wanted to bring in, um, you know, some extra colour, you can do that by just using fabrics and lace covers then on your envelopes um so then of course to embellish it as you can see what i've done here like i was saying earlier on about the lace um i'm going to add now some lace to the top of this one here so i'm just going to grab that i'll be back in a second okay so i've got this bit of um blue lace and i'm going to try and make a ruffle out of this now um to add across I'm the now front going of to the add a little cluster i think on the front just to um embellish and finish it off so I just stitched um, a ruffle together from some lace. Um, I was going to add that to it, but it's a bit much and it's a bit bulky because obviously I want to keep the journal nice and flat. So I've taken a piece off that and I'm just going to uh, stitch that onto here, which is a small cluster that I've already put together. I'm going to use this button because I think it goes really, really nicely with that bit on the fabric there. And hopefully then it'll stand out from the, um, the blue that is underneath. So let me just stitch this on here. If I can get my needle into the, the button. There we go. Let's put that on the centre first. Might be easier. Gosh, this fabric is thick. There we go. It's like one of those things in it. You sit and do things like threading 
needles and sewing on buttons that you can do it with your eyes shut. And then the minute you turn a camera on and you need to be able to talk and do it, suddenly everything goes wrong. Fascinates me, that does. But there you go. Right, I'm keeping one eye on the time because I've got to nip down and collect my number two son from work because he's got himself a weekend job now. And um, that's going really well. I don't know if you hear my little dog snoring behind me. He's uh, out for the count. The sun has deserted us again today. We've got this horrible overcastness. They did say that we were going to have some storms this week, but uh, it didn't happen. So it just went really cool instead. So thank you, Lexi, for telling me that we've got your, you've got my rain. Uh, please hang on to it because I really don't want it back. <laughs> or I hope you'll see it blow somewhere else, but we don't want it back. But we would like some of that nice warm weather back because I know we complain because we're not used to it. But my golly, when it goes, then you realise you miss it. Here we are. So, and I'm just going to place that then on there. I'm not going to stitch it on to the, uh, <coughs> the envelope because obviously otherwise it'll come to underneath. When I'm working on my uh, the flap, so I do like just put a paper clip on there. And that um, makes it easier then to uh, keep the flap down. Um, but yeah, that's a really simple, uh, easy, but I think quite effective um, little bit of a, uh, an addition to your um, journals. And like I say, it doesn't matter whether you're using um, digikits or if you're using, um, you know, normal papers or vintage papers or whatever because if you're making this envelope you can use anything to cover it and it'll fit for any theme so there we go so we now have two book page fabric covered pockets i hope you enjoyed the video today um if you did please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment underneath much appreciated if you haven't already subscribed if you'd like to subscribe to the channel and check out the links that are in our description box underneath so there's some information there about um our facebook page um our etsy uh shop um and we've also got the buy me a coffee link there as well now um and also i will put the um links to the kit for um the blossom song journal kit as well but uh thanks for joining me take care and i'll be back with you very soon bye now